Hi, right, good morning. Today we're going to uh, remove the antifreeze coolant from our Volvo D13. This is a 2020 model 860. We want to show how to just remove and then add back the antifreeze slash coolant. I may use those terms interchangeably. So a couple of things you'll need. You'll need use uh, three or four empty and relatively clean five gallon buckets. Make sure there's nothing in it, no trash, no grease. Um, it'd be easier if you had a, um, a 19 millimeter hex Allen socket here to take the fender off. I'll show you how to do that in just a minute. You need you this little apparatus right here. It looks like an air chuck, but it's not. A little blue thing is just to keep the trash out of it. Um, this goes into, clicks in the bottom of the radiator just like an air chuck. And uh, you'll need your length of hose, uh, maybe four or five feet worth of hose, and just a hose clamp connected to that. You can get these, this piece here off Amazon for $20, $25. Length of hose from any hardware, Home Depot, Lowe's store. Um, this socket here that I mentioned, get off Amazon, they're not too bad. $10, $15, and of course, just a half inch ratchet that most everybody would have. And you may need some uh, um, red antifreeze. This is the heavy duty, it's the red color. I got this from the Volvo um, dealership. It's some I had left over, it's about half full. May need some just to top off, but this is the 50 50 pre mixed. But it is the red for heavy duty engines. Make sure that's what you put back in. Let's kind of go through this. So if you got your, it's a lot easier if you take this fender extension right here off. And it's pretty easy to do. Right in here with the socket. Just loosen it. Damaged. All right, now you want to go ahead and get your buckets in position. At least one bucket. Get your uh, adapter here. Like I said, that's just a plug to keep the trash out of the end of it. Get the bucket here. And this is on the driver's side of the truck. Um, so there's the just kind of orientation. Here's some of your suspension right here. Some greasable joints. There's your load spring right there. That little thing that looks like a great big air chuck. That's where this connects to. And you just pull it back, click it on, and the freeze will start flowing out slowly but surely. You may have to go up top and open the, the uh, reservoir cooler so let's see it's been a while since i did this and i don't know if i can do it with one hand probably not there we go there we go you see it's already flowing just that quick give me a minute here and just hold it straight now so it doesn't fly the bus <laughs> trying to do this one hand is a little challenging there we go While that's doing, I'm gonna go ahead and open up. We add antifreeze and check it. Just open that up. Let's get it loose so air can come in. We'll go back over here, see it's still flowing out. And we'll go ahead and get our other buckets kind of pre-positioned. Or to the wise, just from experience, don't let the bucket get completely full. Let it get about four and a half gallons in here. That way you can move it without sloshing it around. And just whenever this one gets full, take the hose quickly, move it into this one. Move this bucket out of the way, just rotate them out. I don't remember how many buckets I used the last time. I've got three five gallon buckets and then a three gallon bucket. If that's not enough, I'll go get another bucket in the meantime but no need to let you guys watch this this is this is the the way you drain it and when it's empty obviously it'll start running antifreeze um, out the hose and then you just unclick it there's nothing to um 
you saw me, I put it in and antifreeze started coming out immediately. There's nothing to open, no pet cock, no shut off valve. The mechanism in that um, little coupler thing is what actually engages a little plunger in there to let the antifreeze out. And I mean, once you unclick that coupler, that little air chuck looking thing, once you unclick it or detach it, antifreeze stops. Antifreeze stops flowing. I mean, there may be a dribble or two come out, but that, that'll be about it. And you can see we've been talking for a couple minutes and we almost got, um, got probably four gallons out already. And uh, the reason I'm doing this, I, and you can reuse this antifreeze. That's why you want to save it <clears throat> in a clean bucket. You absolutely can reuse this antifreeze if it's not old and, and discolored antifreeze. And all this is, is relatively new antifreeze here. Um, but that's why you want to use clean buckets and save it. Don't, don't get as much or any on the ground. Like I say, you can see it spilled out, what, half a shot glass full. And I was trying to get the hose in the bucket. Um, probably should have had the hose in the bucket to start off with, but doing this one hand, it was a little aggravating. But I got a couple hoses to change, so we're, and during this effort, I'm going to make three different videos. Um, how to get the doghouse off and on, how to change the hoses that I'm talking about that I got to do from the underside of the doghouse. And then we'll come back in a little bit and show how to put the antifreeze back in. And this is about as full as I want to get it here, so I'm going to change over. We'll stop the video and we'll see you guys in a few minutes.